Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay and today we're going to be finishing up painting and decorating the sweet little terrain piece that we built last week out of those cardboard cans. So before we start painting any colors on this, the first thing I'm going to do is give the entire piece a nice coat of rust paint. I always like to do this on terrain pieces, especially when I'm using all kinds of different materials like this. I've got plastic, I've got metal, I've got sand, I've got cardboard, I've got multiple types of metal actually, and multiple types of plastic, as well as these weird battery things. Who knows what metal they're made of. So I'm just going to give the entire piece a nice coat of Rust-Oleum Satin Espresso. Let's do it. Join the line of disposition. Well, he doesn't want to notice, but the line seems long. The back's bleeding, but the front won't miss it. With misery, love company, well, I said he would someday rule the world. John's not open, me. See, the rust paint didn't really stick very much to the plasticky sort of texture that's on the outside of the uh, cardboard cans. And a couple of my circuit board pieces it didn't really stick to, like the copper on this little generator it's kind of pooling off of, as well as this white plastic, whatever the heck it is, um, that these circuit board pieces are made of. But that's okay, because this is basically just a primer layer. Now for the ground, this is going to be the base coat, this color, but uh, for the rest of the building it's not. So if I had just gone right on this with craft paint, it would still be doing this pooling, and then I would have to do other coats. The good thing about rust paint, like I said before, is that we're using so many different types of materials, and it sticks to pretty much anything. I mean, it's made for plastic, glass, metal, whatever, right? Wood, you can use it on anything. And that's kind of the point, because in this terrain piece, we have plastic, we have metal, we have wood, we have cardboard. And to sort of combat that, what you can do is kind of use your brush and slap the cardboard with it, rather than brushing it on, just kind of slap it with the side of it. And not only will that allow it to adhere a little better to the surface, because you're basically putting it in those spots as opposed to like sweeping it off as you apply it. Um, but also it will cover up like those weird spirally marks that go up the cans as well. Um, it'll create a sort of texture as long as you don't glob it on too thick and you don't because you don't want it to drip. And if you do notice any dripping just go back and kind of like I say kind of slap it with the brush. And then when we go to actually dry brush this later, it'll look freaking awesome. It'll have like a lot of weathering and texture to it with very little effort. So that's basically it. So now I'm just going around and touching up, making sure to catch any areas where it's pooling too much because I don't want to kill my detail. But at the same time, I do want to get a nice thick coat on there. And if you have to do multiple coats, you're better off doing multiple coats as opposed to, you know, one really thick coat. But, for the most part, I think I'm good. Like I say, I'm going to be painting the buildings with a different color of paint, so I'm not so worried about the brown looking too nice. And I am going to touch up the dirt later, after I've painted the, some of the other colors. So, for now, I'm really just concentrating on pooling, making sure that, you know, I'm not killing any detail with that. But at the same time, I'm getting a good enough coat on everywhere that my other paints will be able to stick on top without worrying about the plasticky weirdness of this label. So as the main color on the building as well as on most of the boxes and various other decorations, I'm going to be using this Silver Morning craft paint. I've used it in a recent terrain tutorial in my orc buildings, if you guys saw that, and uh, it actually turned out pretty good. So uh, I don't usually like the cheap metallics but uh, it actually seems to be working pretty well for me with a series of washes and stuff and that's what we're going to do today. So sorry, the light's a little bright there. There we go. You got Silver Morning, Crafter's Acrylic. And I just got a bunch on my palette here. I'm going to take my big fat terrain brush that I always use and just throw a nice coat of this on. Now, as I showed you guys in the last scene when the, paint, when the brown paint was still wet, you could still kind of see the label through. It wasn't really sticking that well. 
and hopefully this paint will stick better to the rust paint. You can still see a little bit of the label through it right now, but you won't after this coat's on. So let's apply it. silver we're gonna give it a little terrain wash and I call them terrain washes as opposed to a normal wash because it's not really a wash it's basically just paint and water and for this we're gonna use the cinnamon brown crafters acrylic all I've done here is put it in a bottle I put about maybe a quarter or a third uh, paint and poured water in it shook it up real good and then we're just gonna take our crazy paintbrush and cover the entire model in this. I want to start at the top and work my way down because as you noticed it will just drip down the model and this way we can combat both the drips and cover the entire model at the same time rather than having to go back and touch up the drips. And there may be some more running and pooling later that we might have to touch up a bit, but pooling it actually isn't that bad of a thing in this circumstance as it would be with your models. With uh, a surface area like this, it's okay if there's a little bit of pooling because it will actually add to the effect. I mean, we actually want these to look water damaged, right? And more than painting it on, again, like I did with the silver, instead of painting it with streaks, I want to like kind of stab it. And that way it'll end up not only providing a texture, but it'll also give the illusion of texture that's not actually there. <laughs> Sweet, so now I'm just going to go around and find any areas I think are dripping too much, pooling too much, whatever, and just hit them quickly with my brush, again just kind of stabbing them to even them out. That's pretty much all there is to it. So now that our wash is dry, we're just going to hit it back with a super light dry brush of our base color, the original silver that we used. And uh, I can't stress how light you want to make this dry brush because we don't want to lose any of the weathering we've already done. We just want to bring everything back out and make it pop again. So let's get at it. Just brought everything back up. Now it just looks like a nice oxidized metal. Beautiful. And the point I stressed about the super light dry brush, especially with a large brush like this, is that it'll just shade everything nicely and make sure to do broad strokes. And even looking at it through the camera now, I can see areas where I didn't really get it very well. And that's okay. The thing about doing it light is that you can go back and do successive coats later. Right? Whereas if you go on too heavy to start, then you go on too heavy and you can't reverse it. So, anyway, that's the philosophy there. So now that we dry brushed all our silver, I want to make sure I finish basically all the core colors before I go on to any of the details. So, I'm going to go back and touch up the dark brown on all of the dirt areas. And going back to my satin espresso. One, two, three, four! Alright, 
right, so now I'm just going to go around and touch up any areas where I think it's either not gone on thick enough or pooled too much or whatever. And then uh, we'll let it dry and go on to our next layer of dry brushing. So now that our touch up on our brown is dry, we're going to dry brush a couple of layers on top of the sand so that we can start throwing on some foliage. So the very first layer, just as we've done in a lot of our past terrain tutorials, I'm going to dry brush the yellow oxide over the sand. Of our stupid lives. One, two, three, four. Final, very, very light dry brush of the unbleached titanium. She's so pretty, she don't have to think. And if it's ever blue, she can pave it pink. TV's the only place she don't feel bad. When we pushed her through, we pulled her along in her entire life. We made her wrong. Every single dream she ever had. Notice the piece doesn't really have a lot of color, and I want to add some color to this. Because, like I say, even though we really made the metal shine, we made the dirt pop, we still, I mean, I, I'm going to add grass and foliage and all that stuff to this, so it is going to come to life in many ways, but we need some other colors other than just green. Like I've done in uh, the past Trash Terrain videos, like I did with the uh, toxic waste canisters, for example, the bottle cap toxic waste canisters, uh, I just added that little splash of purple, you know what I mean, to kind of add some color to it. So, the first thing I'm going to do, yes, the majority of the color in this piece is already going to be green, but I am going to add a green wash. This is a terrain wash, much like the brown that we did earlier. It's just paint and water. And uh, I'm just going to hit certain areas, like, especially in corners, like up here, around this. And just kind of shove it in there and let it drip down a bit. I'm only going to hit certain areas with it. And I'm going to let it run if it decides to run a little bit. Just like that. Over here, too. Cool. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit up on the uh, around the top. And just anywhere else, I kind of think, needs a little bit of extra detail. There are no such things. As coincidences, well, I'll give thanks to the failures that brought me here, to all the mistakes I've made and have yet to make. Well, I've wasted most my life on anger. Now, as that's drying, I'm actually going to add another color to this mix. I'm going to uh, take a little bit of blue, I've decided. I think I'm going to do some blue on this. And I'm just going to hit mostly those like weird little battery things that I have there. And rather than paint it on, it's actually going to be more like a dry brush. Because I actually still want to be able to see the uh, metal and the rust through the blue. So I want to kind of do, like I said, more of a dry brush kind of idea. And for that, I am actually using Dark Blue is just the name of it. It's sort of your standard um, Cantor Blue or whatever. Obviously, dollar store equivalent. And like I said, I'm just going to brush these guys just to give them a different tint. Oh, soulmates. Cause I give thanks to the taxi that brought me here No, I wouldn't trade laughter for gold No Isn't it priceless? Everything works out 
one color on there other than just green and we got a little pop of blue which is great um, I'm gonna add a couple of final details after we finish these pieces but uh, for right now we're just gonna throw on some grass on the base to sort of start bringing some of the foliage into it um. I'm sailing to the moon Or is it the sun? And I can't tell It's too Soon. We've got our grass on there. The next thing we're going to do, bef while we wait for that to dry, since we uh, got to wait a while, we might as well go ahead and do this, because we're going to have to wait for this stuff to dry too. So just like the building, the 40k building that I did in the past, I want this to blend in with the same sort of theme, so I'm going to use my algae here. This is just, uh, sorry, moss. It's actually moss, not algae. My bad. Uh, I just bought this at the Dollarama. It is actual moss that has been dried out and I'm just gonna go around and look for areas of this that I really want to cover up. So example here, the spiral sort of mark that goes around the can. I'm gonna try and make that a little more invisible. Also on the peanut can, I have a few little ripples and things that I'm not really fully happy with. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna hit those areas with glue and then I'm just gonna stick this stuff on just like we did in the past tutorial. So let's do it. There's our vines. It looks pretty sweet. So now we're going to let this uh, white glue dry overnight and then I'm going to show you how we're going to protect these in the future from wear and tear. The final step on our piece is just to seal in all of these vines because right now the initial PVA glue is dry but as you can see they're a little squishy and these things do tear off pretty easily. So all I'm going to do for that, just like I did on the uh, 40k building I was talking about, is take a little PVA glue I'm going to add some water to it, so I'm going to get a nice big glob of glue on there. Add some water to it, so I've got my cup of water here, and I'm just going to splash it from my brush onto here, mix it up a bit, steer it up until it's a nice watery consistency. PVA glue tends to be really chunky if you don't stir it around a lot once you mix it with water, so make sure you mix it in really good, get it nice and watery to the point where it's not so tacky, it's really runny. Just like that. Cool. And then all I'm gonna do is start from the top and work my way down. And the reason I'm doing that is because of course, water flows downhill. And I'm just gonna kinda try and soak these vines in this solution. And I'm gonna try and push towards the building with them so that any parts of the vines that are sort of sticking out end up getting stuck to the side of the building so that they're not sticking out anymore. Don't worry if it drips a bit because it will, this, el uh, I almost called it algae again, this moss will soak it up very much like a sponge because it is dried out. And that is pretty much all there is to it. So let's just go at it. Just like that show you like on HBO If we're leaving tonight I'll be right Alright, so now that I've got it all around I'm just going to go around I'm sure you saw me doing it as I was applying the glue But I'm just going to go around to any areas where it's dripping too much Like where I've got a massive glob And just soak it up in my brush And all you're going to do for that is just make sure your brush is dry 
stab it a bit, get rid of those globs, because yes, white glue will glue dry. Like right now it looks kind of weird because there's just like white everywhere, but it will, it will, it will glue dry. It will dry clear. <laughs> so uh, you just want to make sure that there's not like an apparent glob left after it dries. And then like any areas like there where it's actually not supposed to have any glue, you can just kind of spread it around so that again, it's not apparent once it dries here as well. There. And like I say, I was kind of doing it as I went because as I move on to this vine, this one was starting to drip and even there you see it's still dripping. So I don't want to kill that nice green drip that I actually do want to see that I made. Instead, so I'll just spread it around, and then once it dries, it'll dry clear, and no one will see it. Cool. I think we're pretty good. So all I gotta do now, after I've attended to all these drips and pooling, is wait for it to dry, and uh, it's ready for the table. There it is, our vines are mostly dry, and there's our sweet little 40k building made out of some cardboard cans. So these little rock guys I just have in front here were just a fun little project I was working on while uh, all the glue and paint and stuff dried on this piece. I just figured that way I could populate uh, our table a little quicker and give me something to do while I waited for things to dry. Now, of course, I didn't do a video tutorial on these, but there is a video tutorial for these in our Malifaux Terrain series, so if you can go check that out in the playlists. Uh, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this building. Let's take a good look at it from both sides. I think it turned out pretty awesome. And as you can see, the white glue really, if you can, if you can even just see from me pushing on it before it was spongy, now it's hard which is great because that means it's going to stand up to some wear and tar and usage on the as a battlefield. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Uh, please hit subscribe so you will be able to see all the future trash terrain tutorials that we're coming out with on this channel. Also, if you really like what we do, make sure to go to the description below and click on our Patreon campaign there for as little as a dollar. You get all kinds of behind the scenes access to what we do here, extra video content as well. You get perpetual discount at thewarpainter.com, 10% off all your paints, brushes, broken toad, Vallejo, uh, scale 75, they got it all, so check that out. We will be doing a lot more terrain in the future, guys, so any ideas you have where you know you might think, oh, that would be cool to turn in terrain, but I'm not really sure how to do it, please message me. You can email me at EncounterWarGaming at gmail.com, or you can message us on Facebook or Instagram as well. Uh, please make sure you hit that subscribe at the very least, and we will see you at our next encounter.